Uh, the motor gentlemen, okay, this is an MCI J4500 model, uh, 45 footed, 45 feet long. Uh, this is how you open the entrance door. You gotta hold the switch until the door is, is fully open. And same thing when you close the door. Press the switch to hold it down until the door is fully closed. The steer axle, okay. This axle should be inflated at 125 PSI on the ambient temperature, always, okay? Um, this brakes, okay? Uh, back here we have a tour signal. This docking light, this light comes on to help you see anything on the side while you're making a turn. When you switch to the right hand side turn, this light will come on to help you see whatever is next to you, okay? Uh, this your bag of door. It's got a manual switch to uh, lock and unlock the doors. Right now it's unlocked so anybody can open it. You open the door, raise it all the way up, and the lock. Locks on the up position. Okay. The way to unlock it, either you flip this up or it's a handle back here. You pull it down, and then you close your door. Okay? Like that. While we're here, do we want to go over the extra yes. supplies? Yes. Okay. Right in here, we have your you can stay with the flares. In case you have emergency on the road, you can stay with the triangles. Okay. Uh, also, in this compartment here, you have spare belts, light bulbs, fuses, in case you need it. All right. Always make that part of the pre-trip, make sure everything is there okay. for you or the next driver, whoever is taking this. And an extra gallon of, actually two and a half gallons of DEF fluid. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, bay number one, same thing here. Bay number two, there's a switch on the front. If you have the switch turned on for the baggage bay lights, every time you open the doors, the lights will come on. Okay. But you can turn it off. It should be off right now. That's where they don't come out. Okay? Bay number three. Okay. Right inside the center box right here, it's a canister. It's a, it's a, it's a fire suppressor. In case something's going on, a thermal event with the engine, that we kind of say we deplete whatever is in there to suppress the fire. Okay? Uh, and also, there's a module in the center of the coach that senses the gravity of the coach. If for some reason you're driving too fast or you're making a turn too fast, it will sense that and it will derate the engine power, apply the brakes, shift down the transmission, anything it can to keep you in a straight up position. You may not feel it, because it, it happens really quick. Okay? Right here, that's your battery compartment door. It's a handle in here, okay? You push on the handle and you lift the door. Okay. And also safety, safety pin. When you put it on, so nobody gets hurt. Okay, so this can stay up. Okay. Two batteries, 12 volts each battery with a 1300 CCA, which is a high amperage uh, battery, okay? Uh, master cutoff switch. If you're gonna cut all the power off for the for the bus, you just flip to the off position. Okay. All right now. Right here is your uh, is your power inverter. If you notice, you have uh, AC outlets on each seat. So this is how you provide the passengers with AC power. You got two outlets, one for each side. You got two secret breakers. In case somebody say, hey, I got no power on the drop on the driver's side on my coach. So you check circuit breaker, you see if it's pop or something left something on on the bus. And then how you reset. So you okay. turn it on and off right there? That switch on and off? Yes. On the bottom? Yes. Oh, okay. Right here is is a um, outlet to supply power to the coach. In case you uh, you have a group that's going to stay inside the bus, but you, it, it's not required for you to have the engine running, you just come up with a 
electrical cord plugged to 110, connected here, everything's on. So that will keep all the lights running without yes. draining the batteries? Without draining the batteries, without running the engine. Okay. Okay. Generator but is you cannot start the engine while there's a trip down. In case you go, hey, my bus won't start, make sure you do disconnect this before you start. Right. Okay? So, any questions? With that on and off switch right here, after you gotta turn it off. Out of every run or. It's reason. recommended after you trip, after you park, and you do all the all the final checks on the coach, make sure everything's okay, and you turn everything off, just you turn it off. off. So, just turn it back. So, just like the freight liners, you just, yeah, yeah just kill it yeah. at the end yeah. of the. Okay. okay. What we have here, is fuel tank if i'm not mistaken it's 110 gallons capacity okay and you have a depth tank which is the uh, fluid is what helps to the uh, emissions they don't go together they don't mix okay? do not mix this uh, fluid with the depth or vice versa because we can damage the engine doing that okay uh, this is a 15 can you, can you gallon. Fuel from either side? Was there, there's a fuel, there's a tank on the For other the fuel tank, yes. There's a the fuel two from both sides. Okay. For the depth, just on this side. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Julian, can we back up real quick? Sure. Kevin was telling us that little panel back there that there is a uh, oh. AC filter. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. This right here. AC filter? That's your filter for the evaporator. Okay. For the passengers, uh, AC filter. It's like a camera filter then. Yes, so yes, that's the camera filter. If we take that out once a month and, 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 and blow it out, we're, we're gonna uh, this. no, you just replace it. We replace it. We don't blow it out. You no. replace it. Then. Okay. How often? Uh, that all depends how they use the coach. Okay. Yeah. But we just uh, like I would say like uh, I would say every maybe? month. Every month. Okay. Every month. This you drive axle over right here. This is the axle that also sets the parking brake on. When you're not moving and you set your parking brake, this is the axle that only locks up. Okay? To keep the coach from not rolling while you're standing still. Another docking light, another tool signal. This is the tag axle. This is the one that helps you to steer and turn while you're in the city or on the road. But once you go over 20 miles an hour, it will lock in a straight position, regardless what you do. Can you talk about turning? Uh, we talked about earlier. Oh yes. Oh, okay. Uh, when you're driving in the city, a lot of a lot of turns left and right. Uh, sometimes may we may cut the corner too early or too late. That's gonna you know have a little issue with. This the axle. This is the one that guides you when it tells you to turn. If you're making a left turn, you're watching the corner, right? And when you see the drive axle approaching to the corner, that's when you turn. And your safety is going to turn. Because if you cut it too early, oh, you yeah, damage the yeah. coach. So always pay attention. To so you want the curb to be centered to that tire? Yes. Right. And you're going to notice what you're driving. You're going to notice you're making the turn. Right. When you see this at the right of the car, and then you turn, then you'll be safe. So, so when you're making that turn, will the, will the tag axle lift to assist on the turn? Is that what you're it saying? It will turn. It will, oh, it will turn. But it won't raise. Oh, okay. okay. It just moves. It just moves. Like 10 degrees. Yes. 10 degrees. Okay. Yes. Right here is a uh, uh, storage compartment. Okay. You can lock that in place if you need it. Okay. And right here, if you open this door, that's the access to the end. To the fuel filter, to the starter, to the fuel lines. Everything behind here is about the end. Okay. What do you... Do people just store this like extra parts in here? Uh, or something like cleaning, or something? like a bucket, a mop, something for the driver can use to clean okay. the bus going down the road, something like that. Okay. Or extra gallon of oil, coolant. Death fluid. Death yeah. fluid, yes. Okay. Toilet paper. Toilet paper, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I just found this out. You can get a it's a ticket to hold offense if you're on an over the road trip and you don't have toilet paper. You and the chemical for the toilet. And they have them, oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> Which, that's, that's where we're going right now. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is right here. This is the the valve. 
to dump the toilet. Okay, this valve keeps everything inside the toilet tank up here. You have a secondary toilet tank right here. Okay, they say you're going on a on a trip for five six days. And people were using the toilet and you need to dump it, but there's no place to do it down the road. So you open this valve, everything in the toilet tank is gonna go in there. It's gonna stay there, and then you fill up the toilet and keep on going. Once you're ready to dump everything, open the other valve and everything will come out. Now which other valve is that? Can you show us again? Right here. This one here. Okay. This is the one for your toilet and that's the one for the whole bin tank. Okay, so you're you're on the road for, for, for a day and a half. The, the, the top toilet is full. You 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 open you, this valve. It goes to the lower it goes tank. To the lower, close the valve. Close it again. And then add water into the toilet. Okay. And add then chemical. Water. We want chemical. Okay. Okay. And the other one's gonna be right? In case your battery is dead in the coach and you need a boost boost the bus with jumper cables, this is your 24 volt post right here. 24 volt. Oh, okay. Lift this up. Okay. And then you ground stop. Okay. Okay. 24 volt, not 12 volt, 24. It's a question. It's a all right, so you have a dead battery. Yes. You can't just ask some car to come give me a jumper that's a 12 volt. So you, what do you need? So you either buy like a like a, another rig, like a freight line or something that actually has a 12 volt, a 24 volt system? Yes. Or another vehicle with the 24 volts. Okay. And hooked up to 24 volts on the other side, 24 volts here, part of this. Okay. So just so I understand, because I'm not, so once you've got everything in that lower tank, you're, you're positioned over the, the, the dump spot. Yes. You really, you just hit that valve yeah. right there. You put it down and this is the oh. lock right here. Unlock it, okay. turn it over and it will open. I see, okay, thank you. So as long as that is just generally over the, the dump hole, they just kind of just line it up and just let it go? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. usually okay. what they do and everything. Okay. okay. That's okay. pretty simple. Yeah. What we have here, if you come on this side here, these are the switches for the for the region, okay? You switch to do the region, you switch for the fuel pump. There is a mechanical fuel pump on top of the engine, uh, the, excuse me, fuel tank, that you flip it down, it will engage, and we're gonna shoot fuel into the uh, engine. In case, in case you uh, change the filter going down the road, and you need to prime the fuel system, change your filters, flip the switch, and fuel will start filling up those filters, then you can fire your uh, engine. This is the, a, a test for the fan clutch. We, we're gonna do it in a minute. And you are uh, in your diagnostics post right here. In case the mechanic, whoever is checking the bus, needs to connect them to the electrical, you can do it through here. So you initiate a regen from here or from the, from the, the, the driver cab? When the, when the driver is required to do a stationary regen, it needs to come up here. And, and hold the switch for six to ten seconds, and, and, and it's gonna start doing region. And, and you don't want to be any place where it's flammable, it's not on grass, yes, not yes, on, you want to yes. go on Yeah, because it gets really hot on the exhaust. Make sure that. Okay, uh, this is your door handle for the engine compartment. Push it forward, right here. The yellow door handle? Yes, push it forward, and the engine door release. Okay, so what we have here is your uh, AC compressor, of course it's big, not the size of the car, it's really big, okay, your AC belt right here, uh, engine oil dipstick, okay, engine oil filler cap, just for the uh, engine, power steer, uh, fuel reservoir right here, um, and here's also a side glass. If you if, if you see this right here, that's gonna tell you when your toilet tank is full oh, okay. or it's low. Oh, so okay. it's a side glass with the you see you can see the water level right here. Okay. So when it's at half of the side glass, that's how much water you need to put inside the toilet. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> uh, AC compressor belt, um, alternator belt right here. You have two alternators, okay? Uh, 140 amps each alternator, 240, uh, 280 amps total, okay? So 
this is enough to run everything on the coach. But for some reason, something happened. If one of the alternators quit charging. You have enough amps and voltage to keep going until you make it home. But you're gonna lose your AC because one, it may not be enough to hold the AC motors running. The problem is now, but, but it's enough to get you where you need to go. Yes, so that yes, you can get yes, 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 yes. You can check them out and then change it whichever happened. I also have a light right here. If the light comes on, that tells you the alternator it's it's faulty. It's not it's not working. Okay. Very important. Every time you work in or got your hands on the engine compartment, make sure rear start switch off. Engine enable off. So what we're doing is here, if somebody's trying to start the engine from the front, you're not gonna be able to do it. We have totally control up here. You do you pre trip, check your belts, check your uh, uh, check your cleaner. You alternators, everything looks good. And then when you're done, flip it up, close your door, and start the engine from here. We also can do it from here. I'm gonna show you in a minute how to do it. Um, right here, this is the pro heat. That's a auxiliary a heated, a heated unit, okay? It comes on automatically when the engine is cold. When the temperature of the engine warms up to 140 degrees, this shuts off, okay? This is only to help out the warm up the engine quickly, okay? Shuts off and, uh, and the engine takes over from there, okay? This is your uh, coolant reservoir, very important right here. Coolant reservoir and side glass, okay? Right there. You don't need to open the cap of the, of, of the tank to check the coolant level, so it tells you right there there's food or you need, okay? Very important right here. Um, those two things right there are your DPF filters. Your DPF filter on top, SCR filter on the bottom. What are those do? That's the DPF filter. That's the that's the system that cleans the I mean the emissions. Exhaust. Yeah. Okay. I mean the exhaust. Do we need to? Again, I'm not very technical, sure, uh, sure. mechanically knowledgeable. Do we need to check? Like I see. Transmission oil, do we need to check transmission oil or transmission levels and stuff okay. like fluid levels? The procedure to check the fluid level on the transmission is you can do it from the dash okay. on the on the display. Okay. Or you can do it mechanically over here with the dipstick. Okay. Okay. But there's a system on the coach that tells you the life of the oil. Okay. It starts at hundred percent. Once it's going down, down the numbers, it's time to change the oil. Great. Okay. Um, any questions here? One of the things, oh good, go around. Oh, the, oh, the, the labyrinths. Okay, all right. This is how they service the toilet here. This is how they connect the, the hose to fill up the toilet tank from here. You connect the hose here, open up the water, and then just watch the level here. Oh. If there is a half, half of the side glass, then you shut up the water, enough. disconnect your hose. Is that just a regular garden house? It's got a quick connector. I don't know. It's about a half inch size quick connector for this. Oh, so we have to buy that hose then? Yes. Do you have it in stock? Probably. Oh, we'll, we'll, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, we'll check. All right. okay. well, that's why so you put the water on the toilet. <laughs> this is why you... This here, it's, it's the access compartment to the toilet tank. In case somebody drops something big inside the toilet and you cannot drain it, there you go. Open this up, yeah. and we go in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah look. Okay, I'm gonna start the engine from here so you see it. Uh, no, I want to ask you one more thing before you start the engine. You, um, uh, hose bust on the road. Uh, okay. We have replacement. We have repl uh, uh, yes. uh, Yeah, we have, and I meant belt. We have replacement belt. But you said the chauffeurs with the with the tire jack or something like that, they can actually change out the hose them the the belt themselves so they can get back on the road and out for a tow truck. Yes. Let me get the tools. Okay. okay. You see these two LED lights on? I mean the two alternators, the energized but they're not working. Once you start the engine, this light should go on. I mean the alternators are charged. If for some reason one of these lights comes on with the engine running, that's how it's saying to you there is a fault of okay. one of the alternators. Number one or number two. Okay. So initial switch off. 
engine won't stop. Okay? Ignition on. But make sure you flip this back to the front stop. Because if you, with the engine running, if you leave this in the standard position, once you kill the engine from the front, you're not going to be able to start it back up again. Because this is, and you're going to go, what happened? Check your switches. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. Okay. The procedure to change to uh, AC compressor belt is. Using this one right here, real quick, sorry. over this side. You're gonna position this underneath the AC compressor base. Then pull. Up. Yeah, so yeah, we'll see how okay. we You're gonna need two person to help you. One to yeah. pull this up to release the tension, right. and then then you remove your belt. Well, you see? It's like a pulley. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like that. That's what you want. AC compressed belt. Yeah. For your alternator belt, uh, we're gonna need a half inch drive ratchet. This tool is for the older models. Oh, okay, I have the yeah. older belt here, but we don't have it here. So with a half inch drive ratchet, put it here, turn it down, and change the belt. It's like a pulley in a car. Though. In case you forget how the belt was going on the bus, right here, it tells you, right here. It also shows you uh, the warning labels. Okay. Why should not be in the bus? Okay, any questions here? Okay, let's move over here, okay. Um, here's your handle, right in here. The release handle. This is how you change the belt for the alternators. This is a square slot here, half inch dry. Release the tension. Oh, that's nice. Remove it, simple. Put it back on the same way, and release. Just like in a car. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Release the tensioner. Change your belt. Make sure you follow the directions up here. You know, remember I was telling you about the fire suppression system? Yeah. Okay. This one of the nozzles right here is pointing to the alter to the electrical alternators here. If something happens, it will deploy the gas or whatever is in there to suppress the fire. There's one here. There's another one in the back. Something. Somewhere back there. So this is your radiator right here. This is your CAC, the charger air cooler right here, okay? Now we have electrical motors. They're gonna come on when the engine is, is, is reaching the temperature, uh, like 205, 210, then, then they're gonna come on to, I mean, to cool down the engine. These are the motors that cool down the air here that goes into the engine. This cools down the air, this cools down the water. And it's, and it's been doing about the motors right here. Okay, one important thing here, there's a sensor here, magnetic sensor, right here, and there's another one here. Okay, when the engine is running, for some reason, you open this door, a message will come out on the display telling you that, that the door is open or something with the communication is open. Okay, and automatically, the motor will shut off. If they're running with the door closed, with the door open, they will stop running. So if you have the engine running for a long time with this door, make sure you close it. Otherwise, the engine's going to get hot. Okay? Um, any so, questions here? Julian, I want to make sure I'm correct yes. on this because Kevin took us through this. He said that the, the, that it's possible if you to run this thing on five of those. Five of those, those fans running. I mean, if you absolutely have to. And he was saying that if we're in the unlikely scenario that like both of these go down, 
you could actually pull one of those, put one over here, and then have one running here, four running here, and then get yourself to a service center. Yes, yes, that's correct. That's okay, correct. wanted to that's make correct. sure that I had that yes. accurate. Yes, that's accurate. correct. See, once you have the door closed, this switch right here is supposed to line up with the other one here. Okay. Uh, same thing like the other side, is you tag axle here, uh, one flaps, uh, lining for the left side, uh, drive axle wheel. This is the other end for the fuel tank on, on, on the driver's side. Clip this, fill it up. Okay. Same thing. Close it, unlock it. You want to open this door? There's another handle in here. Lift this up. Here. Lift it up and open the door. Okay. <clears throat> so we all know we're using that fluid to do the region system, right? This is the pump right here that shoots the death fluid into the uh, 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 system. There's a filter in here that has to be changed, I would say, every 50,000 miles. 50,000? Yes. Okay. So right here is your condenser for the main AC, for the passenger AC. So you got four motors, uh, your main uh, liquid valve, your drivers, uh, your passenger liquid, I mean liquid valve. What was when, the first one? This is the liquid valve. Okay. Okay. This is, when you turn the AC on, this valve energized, opens up. At the same time, the compressor runs to let the freon circulate. Yes. And this one here opens up when you switch the parcel rack, auxiliary AC on, this one opens up. Okay. I have a question. On, on the cutaways, um, we turn off the heat with, with a, uh, a handle on the bottom. So during the during the summertime, is there anything we have to do to turn off so the heat doesn't activate or anything like that? The heat comes up automatically on and off. Okay, so there's no extra, uh, extra no, no. handle or anything to no. turn? Okay. The heat and the AC work together to keep okay. the, the temperature inside the coach. Okay. The AC is going to be running all the time. Okay. And, and this, I know this looks like it's, it's missing something, but that's, that's, that's fine the way it is. Okay, this one right here, that's the, that's the how the uh, AC system reads the ambient temperature. Right. And that's the calculation, the temperature inside versus temperature outside, pressure. and the pressures and all stuff to yeah. keep the, whatever the setting point you want for the passengers. So, if somebody sees this, don't let nobody cut it off, but this is, it's, it's a sensor right here. Okay. <laughs> Oh. Is this for an overfill? Like if you overfill the or diesel? The diesel? It, yes, it okay. will run down. Okay. Um, we were we were told that maybe once a year we should have. <clears throat> I don't even know how you pull that. You could you should spray down the uh, the coil okay. in there maybe once a year. So you have one bolt right here, like two, half inch, one, two, two and three, and you take this down so you can wash your coil. Okay. Same thing with the one on top. Okay. Lift it down, open it up, wash it, then put it back on and tighten it back up. One, okay. two, and three. Sounds good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, now this three door. Make sure the door locks. Once you open the door, make sure the lock is. This is your rear electrical compartment door. This is what controls the electrical system in the coach. One, two, three, four, four modules. This is your uh, uh, electrical board. These are your multiplex modules. This is what turns everything on and off on the coach. The lights, motors, switches, everything. Right in here, okay? Uh, electrical uh, fuse board for the rear of the coach. Relays and fuses, uh, ABS module right here. Okay, um, this I believe is your uh, uh, suspension module, MDSS. That's the module that controls the right heart of the coach, all the kneeling, the rear race, and all the movement on the coach. This is the new AC board. This module right here controls the air conditioning on the coach. 
and if you and here is the label for everything that's in here okay if one of you mechanics wanted to connect we got two ports right here black and green if one of you mechanics wanted to connect into the electrical side of the coach then you go through here if they needed to connect to the engine transmission anything on the powertrain they go to the green connect so we separate that you got a spare fuse as right here ground starts and uh, basically that Oh, one thing here. Let me show you this. This is your evaporator motor. This is the motor that brings the air into the passengers. Okay? The air... The air from the cabin... It goes through, goes through here. It, it pushes the air up through these channels right here into the all inside the windows. So you have one brushless motor, no service required in this motor. Okay, it's 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 uh, I mean 24 volts motor. What are the most common? So like, the, let's say these guys are out of town; they're a thousand miles away, whatever. Yes. And they have. What are the most common AC issues that they will experience on the road, and how can they correct it themselves? I mean, what, what would like the most common things that? Hey, check this. Check this. The filters. Make sure the filters are clean, uh -huh. and they're not restricting the air into the passengers. That could be one of the problems. The other problem is that if the filter hasn't been Service. serviced, so the evaporator it could be clogged, could be dirty. And that would change the pressures and the, I mean, the passengers may not have enough air inside. And where is that filter? On the other side, they want to show you. Yes, that's the filter for this model right here. All right, the one there. Yes. Okay. Um, may sound silly, I'm not mechanically yes. inclined like Jared uh, either. So um, if they say, hey, it's low on Freon, I, was, I imagine like some of our buses, hey, the, the AC messes up, so it's, it's low on Freon. If it's, it's, a, it's a sealed system. So if it's low on Freon, then it's got to have a leak somewhere then we need to uh, work into that. And the free, the, to add free, it was on the other, I saw the refrigerant sign on the, on, on the engine, so that's where, that's where. Yeah, yeah, you can add it into the AC okay. compressor. Okay, so if you can see this right here, this is your uh, uh, water heater water valve, okay? The air, the air conditioning is running all the time, so to keep the temperature at 72 degrees inside the bus, this valve is gonna open and close. Open and close. Because behind this core, there's a heater core. There's another core. That the hot water is gonna fight with the AC to keep the temperature. Okay. The more hot water, the more hot it's gonna be inside. The less hot water, the cold is gonna get inside. Okay. Uh, Can you show okay. us how to open this one up real quick? Okay. Ah. Uh, from. But on the, the inside, there's a handle. Okay. On the left hand side, the driver, you put the handle up and releases both of these latches. Or from outside, yeah. you can come down here and there's an opening here. Okay. Just push the, the level up underneath, right here. Okay. And you release that. Okay. okay. So what we see here, you wash it, uh, wash the fluid, reservoir, your running block, okay, you uh, bottle jack. What, what's a running block? That one right there. Chop. Chop. Oh, oh, got it. Okay. A chop block. Mm -hmm. Chop block. Yeah. Running block. And then these, right? Yes. Okay, this is the electrical control panel for the front of the coach. We have one from the back, we have another one from the front. Three modules on the front. Same thing, we have electrical board with fuses, relays, um, side cone, which is the, I believe like a GPS system, if you, wanna, if you wanna activate it. And you see this LED lights on here? Okay. With the 
engine switch off, the power switch on the front off, the door is closed, in about 25 minutes or 30 minutes, this should be go to sleep. Everything in this module should be powered off. If for some reason, after 30 minutes, this stays light up like it is, we need to check that. So that, that's made to save energy on the bus. Okay. Um, and here are the labels, and in the case you need to find a fuse location for the fuse, <coughs> it's, it's labeled right here, it's stated right here. Remember, if you have to change the fuse, always change it for the same size. Do not change a 15 amp for a 20 or 25 amps. Okay, if it's a 15 amps, another 15 amps should go in there. Not a 20, not a 25. Okay. I see down there bumper release, open entrance. Yes. So yes. what? Oh, is that to get to the tires? So is that to supply the air with nozzle right there? Yeah, that's no. for the. Uh, okay. oh, this is for the. Uh, oh, sorry about that. This is if the bus has to be towed or the mechanic has to be working on the bus. This is where you hooked up the connection for the supply air. Supply the air. Okay. You supply the air to tow the bus. Okay, right here. That's the the handle. With the front bumper. And this one right here, the black one, is is to release the door, the air pressure on the entrance door. If the door is closed, you just come here, pull it. And should be able to just to pull the door right here. Okay. But I make sure you close after you do that, make sure you shut it. Would you do that if the bus has been off for a couple of days and the air just loses its air pressure? The door just loses air pressure, so you would come here to release it. Yes, for some reason you cannot open the door, just come here and release and then you put here is your uh your display for the tire monitor system, but also we have another display on the front. This is how you check each each axle in the tires, the pressure and the temperature of the wheels. Now, does that have for the rear ones as well, or yeah. just yes. up here? Each sensor, no. This is just a display. Okay. Each tire has a sensor inside. Okay. That reads the temperature and the pressure. So once you release the handle, all you gotta do is pull it until it lands. Okay. Okay now. That's your tire right there. Okay. Uh, is there a sensor hooked up to the tire of uh, the spare as far as to make sure it is inflated or uh, Say that again. Is there a sensor that actually monitors the status of the spare tire as far as it, all just the air pressure to make sure it's inflated? I think it is. There is a sensor thing, but it's not um, set system. it yeah, okay. into the computer. Okay. So, in case you had a flat tire and you take the spare tire, and put it on the anywhere on the bus, the light's gonna be on on the dash telling you, hey, there's a failure with the TPMS. Unless you correct that, there's a number on the sensor that you type that number back into the system with the location the old tire was after the spare. So, in order to remove the tire here, you lift this up. I did a race right there. Oh, nice. Well, uh, this is how I do Like that. <laughs> I lock okay. it. Then pull it. Okay. Just be careful. It is heavy. When you pull this, make sure you are in the correct position to pull. Don't get hurt. Yeah, don't, don't. Uh, okay. Use your legs, don't not your back. back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Same thing to pull it back. Roll it back in. How much weight can this uh, this platform hold? For instance, uh, can I step on I that would platform? I will say yes, yes, you can. Really? Okay. There we go. Oh yeah. Okay. I've been trying to lose weight. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, don't put Jared. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're, we're, okay. we're, we're not going to put me on there. We're, we're not going to okay. test that. So, oh, we're, we're, everybody, while you have that down, uh, yes. one of the things they're seeing that happens because the fog lights over the road get chips and they get the lights okay. go out. Is this where you would actually change out the fog light? To change the fog light right here, you're going to have some uh, sockets, a 10 millimeter socket. Just oh. connect your light right here and do this bolts, remove these two bolts right here, and 
pull the light out. You see the oh, shoe, okay, right? Okay, yeah. It's a, oh, it's a 10, yeah, it's a 10 millimeters head bolt. Yeah, let's screw it. Let's connect it and pop side right there. Then you put it back together, push it back in, and tighten the bolt back there. It's just the bottom two, right? Not yeah. yeah, no, just this two. Okay. Right. You low beams, you high beams in the headlights, and you turn signal right here. All LEDs. Wipe the plate and make sure that every morning, make sure you check and make sure they, the rubber is good, the wiper blade is good, and every trip. That's a spot mirror in case somebody is standing in front of the coach and you cannot see it from the driver's seat. You can see it through here. You can see down on the front of the coach. Right here. Uh, how, we, how we, can you change, can we easily change out the headlight bulbs that we need to? Okay. We need to change the headlight. Down the road, you see one screw here. Oh, yeah. That's a oh, Philip yeah. here. Yeah. One here, okay. one here, and another one hiding down here. Oh, oh wow. yeah. I see it. You, re then, you remove this, yeah, yeah Philip. You remove this one completely, and the one in here, just loosen it up. It's gonna stay with the bracket. But once you do that, you take this face off. Oh, okay, okay. Yes. Yeah. And back here, there's another uh, 716s. Uh, bolts that you have to remove in order to sweep this out. And change the light bulb on the back, put it together, and then put, you put the face on, put these two screws in, and line this one up. And you're good. Yeah. Same thing with this light right here. There's a bolt right here, and here, and you change this light. This is uh, uh, the cabin driver. All the switches for the driver here. Started from the left side. Here is the pamphlet for the region lights, whatever's happening on the dash, indicating the driver how to do region is right here. There's two lights that should come on the dash. One light on the dash on the left side that telling you that uh, the coach needs to be regened, and the other light that says that the engine is hot and is doing the region. There's two different lights. And another light that it says the it's low on the air fluid. Okay. Also reading the level of the yeah. depth time. Okay. Everything is running in here. Okay. <clears throat> on the left side of the driver's seat, in case of a fire, again in the engine compartment, if you cannot wait for the system to deploy automatically, just pull the pin out, press the switch right here, and the fire extinguisher will deploy right. everything out. Okay. So right it automatically here. shoots it out? Yes. That's pretty cool. Yes. That's the pneumatic fire. Yes, right here. So, Julian, correct me if I'm wrong, but it should go off automatically. It should go off automatically. But if for some reason it doesn't, there's that manual release. Yes, the manual, yes. Yeah. You pull the pin, push the button, it releases really okay. everything on it. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes, you can do it manually. Okay. There is the system that's checking the, the, the fire suppression system right here. System okay. All the sensors, the, the, the canister, the relay, everything is good. The green light is good. Of course, you gotta. Red light here says fire. That's when you put the thing and push them up. Okay. Um, this handle right here. This is the one you put to release okay, the, the, the driver's door. Okay. Um, you have two parking brake switches. One to normal set the parking brake on, and in the event of emergency, that for some reason you don't have any air on the parking brake or one of the airlines is busted and leaking on the air, you have a parking emergency valve, an isolated air tank just for that, just to move the coach out of the, I mean, whatever you stay. You press this valve and it's gonna release the parking brakes, but you gotta hold it down while you're going, while you're moving out of the road. If you release that valve, the parking brake will lock up again. That's for just, just emergency. Just to move out of the way. Just to get out of the way. You should be able to release the brake three times. Enough air, uh, I mean, I mean to do it three times. And that's it. And after that, then fish them over. Okay. Locks. Okay. Uh, we're going to turn the engine on. We have your master switch right there. Master switch button. You turn it off. 
you hear the switches all the ABS valves they they doing the test it should last 15 seconds you're doing everything once you do that then you can start the engine okay <clears throat> before we kept pressing the starter button three times and we could hit the starter and engaging again, right? Yeah. Doing that. He's not doing it anymore. Once the engine is running, even if you hit the start switching, the starter is, is not going to engage. Yeah. It's a one okay. time thing. That's one time, and that's it. Okay. Um, right here on the left side, we have the switch. Can you close it on? I have one question. Yes. Just so others know. Like when we're at a complete stop and the clients have gotten off our bus, the the, the best position for your idle, so okay. other drivers know. Okay. And that's the, the left switch where the ignition switch is on. Okay. When the engine is running, it's running at 600 RPMs. You have the air conditioning on, you have the lights on and everything. So it's pulling the amps or the right. alternator something's gonna happen. So what we do here, we engage it's on the bottom next to the ignition oh. switch. The fast idle. Yes. You hear okay. the engine ramping up? Yeah. Okay. Yes. It's gonna bring the RPMs close to one thousand. That should be enough for the alternators to pull all the juice they need for the AC and, and everything. So um okay um and you were explaining to us that you can leave that fast idle switch on, and once you actually start moving, the engine will automatically yes. take it down where it needs to go. Yes. If you see here, it's 1,000 RPMs, right? So we're going to release the parking brake, and the RPMs automatically drop. Okay. You set the parking brake right on, and they come right out. So we can just leave that switch on, not a problem. Not a problem. Okay. And it's going to tell you right there that it's on fast idle mode. Okay. So, all right. Um, <coughs> so right here on this side, we have the switch that turns the 110 outlets on. On the side of what? Well, well, underneath the switch? Yes. Yeah, you can turn them on. You can turn it off manually. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Uh, remember the heater that I showed you in the engine compartment? Okay. You can turn it off manually from here. If you don't need it on or you don't want it on, Press the stop switch and hold it down, and the unit shut off. It will shut off automatically. Is that just like an emergency heat type uh, system, or is that a standard? It's like when it's when it's too cold outside, and you need to have heat for your passengers. So that's gonna help you to get hot water quickly. So you turn it off. So you can on. No, it's turn gonna it come on automatically. Oh, okay. But if for some reason you don't want it on, like like today you don't want it on, you can turn it off. We're giving you that choice. But it should come on automatically and we shut off when the engine reaches 140 um, in degrees in terms of So that'll make shuts off. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, this one here, I believe, if you press this button here, it's going to turn the monitors on and it's going to give you a presentation for safety. Okay. Well, oh, that's already built in. Yeah, already built in. Because we saw that the other day. Yeah, okay. But you can turn it off. It stays on until it's done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So All right. it'll run its cycle then, what you're saying, if you turn it on? No. Once you press the switch, it's going to come on. But you cannot turn it off. That's what I'm saying. You can't turn it on. Until turn it it's going to run its cycle. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, this switch right here, it's got a automatic traction control that prevents the wheel from slipping, just like in a car. If it sense that one, one wheel is starting faster than the other one, it's gonna the system is going to do whatever it can to hold the wheel preventing from slip. So if that happens, the light's gonna come on and says ATC. Okay? It's telling you the system was activated at some point. So what you do, you press the snow switch here and we disengage them. Okay. Um tag lock. The third axle steers yeah. as you go in below 20 miles an hour. If you wanna keep the tag axle straight, you press tag lock and you're gonna see right here that there's a cylinder that moves the wheel. Once you lock the tag axle, the cylinder stays in a straight position. 
no matter where you go, the wheels will follow you this way. And what situation would you want to have that enabled? Oh, uh, last when you're backing up, for saying. Mainly, right? Mainly, yeah. mainly. Is it just a type of straighter? Or, or when you do alignment? Well, oh, because a type. When you, you when you bring it in a really, really straight position, you lock the third oh. axle to bring it in straight. The switch right here. I'm gonna control the rear suspension. The real race, the one you say, you know, to raise okay. the, the end of the coach. <clears throat> it only can be done with the parking brake release and the transmission engage. Oh, okay. okay. So, if you want to raise the rear of the coach, prior to move or whatever you're going, you're going to hold your service brake, release your parking brake, okay, put your transmission on drive, on drive and then press the rear race button telling you right here real race and you're gonna feel the race the rear of the coach going up oh, okay. then you'll be able to move and then you and then you can drive oh. but below 20 miles an hour you can do all of this once you pass 20 miles an hour it will go to the normal oh, okay. suspension lower itself up. yes yes and then this the other switch here recover you're going back to the normal now okay. okay with the transmission engaged parking brake release you can raise the whole coach oh sorry, sorry. okay you click control level the whole coach goes up okay recover go back down from the position <laughs> and then you can go down as well so it can only be with the brake release and yes. the pound drive. Yes. Right. And okay. that, that one you just pushed now, that was bring all the Yes, down. bring all the, yes, control level up or down, right here. Okay. Well, that, that, that one right there. Right, right. Yes. And, and then you that click one brings it back to normal. Yes. <coughs> and then you hit recover back to the same thing. Uh, in, in what situations would you raise the entire coach? I mean, just like, is it just the ground? Like, like something is on the road, like the high water levels or something okay. is that uneven even train track. Yeah, something like yes. that. Okay. Right. And what is the uh, middle when you, where you get stuck in the middle? That, that's, you can rock the, the, the bus. Okay. If, if, and if you don't High lift, center. High that's center. what, right, that's when you want to lift the whole bus yes. up. Okay. Okay. Then, uh, you had your blind switches, the drivers, right here, left side. Look cool now. Yeah, right like side. That. Yeah, one improvement they made, they got rid of the arms. So right. Yeah, no more yeah, ropes. Oh, that's great. That's great. They were okay. Kind of the switch here that says 360 camera, there's a camera system all around the coach. You go again. Once you put them on reverse, wow. you can see the back of <laughs> camera and you can see all the way around the bus. That's awesome. I needed yes. that the other night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's going to wow, help you. Wow, that's beautiful. You had me mm -hmm. outside. Okay, and also. Wow, this switch cool. right here, it changes position. as a driver, oh. you can switch the cameras and oh. see, really? see oh the side. Oh my, that's so awesome. No, that side. is awesome. That is awesome. And the back. Wow. Cool. Yeah. If, if you, uh, will the camera activate with the turn signals? Yes. Like for like a yes. blind spot? Yes, they will do it. They will do the same thing. Then, left side. Oh. Yeah, just like you can yes. make your blind spots. I was trying to make that turn on and turn it to the other way. Oh, yeah. Then that's your right side. Oh, yeah. That yeah. one is dark. That's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, that's really cool. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Here's your headlight switch. Turn it on. Low beams. Right here. And uh, high beams. High beams low beams right here uh, this is your transmission control pad okay uh, if you press the up and down arrow at the same time once it's gonna check the oil level for you it's gonna go into 15 second delay to check the oil level 
Yeah. And it's got a tag. Wow. Transmission level, okay. You see that? Okay. Yeah. So basically, and then. Uh, Click that again. All your life. Okay. 99%. You can do that as well okay. as a part of your maintenance. Yes. You see how good is the oil? Yes. Check. Okay. I'm 50% now. I can go another so, so miles okay. for you to do that. Okay. Uh, and filters also give a reading of the filters. Oh, wow. Jeez. Filters oh, yeah. okay. Press the up and down arrow again. Transmission health is like every driver has his own way to drive a coach, right? So, some of you, some of us push the throttle down too hard, too slow. So the transmission adapts to the way you drive. So this is not your coach. You're driving this coach one day and then he's driving it behind you and then she's driving behind you. She's driving a different way to drive the bus. Yeah. So the transmission has to adapt to whatever. Wow, that's so, but, but sometimes you may feel a hard shifting, you know, because the way you drive, the way you drive, the it way he drives. So, we can go in there with the computer and reset the shifting parameters so we can go back to smooth shifting again. Okay. So it's, okay, so it's not something that's actually wrong with No, 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 it's just a different way that okay. we all drive. Yeah, we all okay. drive differently. <coughs> yeah, because as the clutches are, are, are wearing out, the transmission is compensating in that gap. Okay. But I like to take off really fast, but you more smooth, smooth. you know, yeah. or you the other way around. So the transmission have to sense all that. But then, you know, sometimes it doesn't work like that. So we we gotta go in with the computer, adjust one that, wow. and you so press neutral, and uh, and that's it. You got you diagnose. Uh, mirror control switches. This switch right here the control the top on both sides, left. All right. Okay. The other switch controls the bottom, the big mirror, the big glasses. Okay. Some of us get confused thinking this is for one side, yeah. this is for the other side. So so just remember. It's coming in, stop. Yeah, the top one. Yes. There you the go. Bottom. But see it like yeah. that, it's better. Okay. Uh cup holder. Beer, please. Beer holder? Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Be careful because this is really close to the transmission oh, pad. Yeah, yeah. And I've seen in a lot of yeah. fluids spill some heat and then it, it creating a little bit of damage. Just just be aware of that. Um, okay, this is your uh, uh, lights for the interior oh, lights. Okay, you can turn okay. it off. Oh, okay. On right here. This is your ceiling lights. Okay. Turn it on and off. Reading lights. Okay. This reading lights. I mean, they activate it. If, if, if you press the switch, it should oh, come okay. on or off. off. Okay. Oh, okay. Now, the same switch. The bottom of the switch. It says test. Place, oh, I nice. test and also test the reading lights. But if you step on that brake pedal one time, it's gonna turn every light outside the coach on and off for you to walk around oh, doing your pre check awesome. your backup light, okay. turn signals, see the headlights, the low beam, the high beam, yeah. see, see how they Can go you on and off. Go by that again, okay? Uh, cool, okay. On your pre trip in the mornings. You want to check all the lights around the coach. Press the test light switch okay. on, step and then the step on the brake one time. And the dash is going to illuminate with all the lights I'm here. And outside, every light is going to turn on and off. You got two minutes to walk around the couch, I mean, around the coach, and do all your checks. Wow, that's really okay. so cool. If some reason one easier, light is not working. Yeah. <laughs> Just for you, Ram. <laughs> okay. Uh, of course, your driver's light right here. Yes. Oh, this is not. Oh, I need to check this. Oh, sorry about that. This is not. It's not working. Okay. Uh, your dimmer light on the panel. Your fog light switch. Turn the fog lights on or off. I mean, the fog lights they're gonna work when the low beam is activated. When you switch to high beam, it automatically turn off. Okay. Okay, be aware of that. Okay. Um, fire side on. We all know what that is. Uh, parcel rack blowers. Parcel rack, that means the system on, on top. It's got one switch for the blower motor. Higher speed. Oh, okay. This one right here. Oh, okay, yeah. Or lower speed. Okay. The AC units on top, 
they sort of separated from this, from the main AC okay. unit. Okay. Uh, unit. They're gonna remain off until you press the switch. So and it's only AC, no no heater. So what about that little knob next to the uh, yeah that it's one? It's the light dimmer. Yeah. Okay. The eject button. And how do you change the color of the lights? That's where we go. I know. <laughs> Look at it easy. <laughs> Before you do that, can you get yeah. the uh, the cleaning light? Okay. Uh, the same switch right here. When you press the clean switch, it's gonna turn every light inside the bus the brightest it can on the white move. Oh, white okay. color. Yes, that's good. Well, we clean the so bus you can the the you can clean the coach. And, and it's right here. Okay. Okay. Cool. So this because I, I know. This AC, what is this AC? Uh, th these control for them. Just, just the front? This one right here. Okay. The, this system right here controls the drivers. This is the speed control. Right. Okay. And your temperature. Warm air, cold air. Right. Okay. Okay. And then right here, this is how you set the temperature for the passenger. Oh, okay. This is the temperature that you want the system to be on. The temperature to be on 69, 70, okay. 68. So and you, you leave it out there. You combine this with that switch. So this com com uh, controls the temperature, that controls the fan speed. This is the main AC. Okay. okay. If the weather outside is like 85 degrees, 80 degrees, you, you basically don't need the auxiliary AC units on top. So you, you, you don't need these. No. Yes. So I think yes. It heats from the bottom up, or cools from the bottom up, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So these oh. are just, just these individual units are, are these are uh, independent of independent. the main. Yes. So if, if you're 110 degrees outside, you're gonna have this as cold as you can go, and then and those on high. Yes. But what's gonna happen is you set the pay, uh, your main AC system to 67 degrees, right? Right. And it's really hot inside the bus. So you have the auxiliary AC unit on. Okay. So everything is pulling, yeah. I mean, cold air. Once the temperature inside the bus drops down to 72 degrees, the AC units on top, they're gonna still blowing air, but not any more cold air. Oh, okay. Because oh. The, there is a switch that automatically shuts the freon off at 72 degrees. Okay. They're gonna keep circulating air, but they're not gonna push any more, I mean, cold air. Okay. The main AC is the one that keeps bringing the temperature down, down, down to whatever you want. Okay. <coughs> if for some reason the temperature rises up to 80 degrees, automatically they're going to come out. Okay. okay. So like, like, I can feel like, I guess, without, without this, but yeah, the air is coming from the window. Excuse me. Yeah. Okay. I got gotcha. you. See? <coughs> okay. This is your... Uh, so this is more like a ceiling fan. Yeah. Yeah, in a way. Mm -hmm. That was the one like next the to it. And right? you have yeah. one here for the driver to keep you uh, more awake. That was the next, what, what button was that? The okay, speed? this is the mirror heat. Okay. To, I mean, to hit up the mirror. Oh, cool, that. cool. Oh, it was the fan. Yeah, to hit up the mirror, so here. This is the one for the... Okay. Low and high. Low, it's just yes. above the ignition switch. Yes, right here. Okay. Oh. Ignition starter switch. Engine override switch. <coughs> this switch, what it does is, if you have a low coolant situation or something's going on with the engine that shuts down the engine, you press the switch and it's, and it's gonna give you just a few seconds of engine power just to move away. Oh, okay, okay. okay. It's not meant to drive the coach on the road. So it's that just, one has to be on off when you're just emergency. Okay. Um, everything here is digital. You have your gauge for the fuel, fuel tank, your gauge for the DEF, okay? Um, Front tank air pressure, rear tank air pressure. <coughs> you see how they drop? Yeah. And then you got an alarm. And it's telling you also the low air on the front and the rear air tank. Okay? okay. Um, what you see right here, 27.8 battery, is actually the, the both alternators combined on the charging system. So you are above 27.2, you're okay. Okay. Once you drop below 27.2, we got a problem. Okay. Okay. Um, your odometer, your trip mileage, and the outside temperature. There's also another switch, I think it's at the front, that reads the temperature for the engine. So the engine has to read the temperature outside also in order to make a better 
I mean, so the battery is set once it drops to 27.2, there you go. Yeah, we got something. So, we, so if you're losing air on the road, right? For instance, you're losing air on the road, so you can pump air with that. So for instance, you're losing a lot of air, you know? Okay. And you got what, 60 seconds to, to pull over to a safe location? No, before if you're drops, losing air, I mean, you you got to pull over. That's what I'm saying, I but mean, how long do you have before it drops? Uh, that's, uh, I mean, if I see something emergency, I'm not going to wait. 10, 15, 20 seconds. No, 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 I know, but I know it's like, a, I know you got about a minute before like, you really got to move out of the way. Well, immediately okay. you just pull over. This is, so you do the pre-trip, right? Once your parking brake is released, you're losing air, right? Yeah. See, that's what you go 100 say. PSI, okay? Yeah. You keep losing air. Today. Once you reach, if I'm not mistaken, 65, 60, the yeah. brakes are going to lock up. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, right. So you, you got to pull over immediately. Okay, yeah. Pull over and engage. Yeah, they're going to pop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 50 PSI. Yeah. The brake automatically locked up. If that happened, then yeah. this valve comes in. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You yeah. press oh, okay. the valve yeah. and release the brakes. So you can pump there. Yeah. See, to See, you can yourself. move, exactly, yeah. but yeah. you press this valve, hold it down, and we can move. That's what I'm saying. So okay. that's the one you use. Yes, that's, that's the one you use. That's, that's, that's what yes. I meant. Yeah. Okay, that's it. And this part of your pressure, yeah. e every day you make sure this valve is working. Oh yeah, that is working. You gotta have all the air inside. Okay, front air tank, rear air tank. There's also another tank which is for the auxiliary system, which is the door, your driver's seat, in something else I cannot remember. Um, but there's no gauge for that. Okay? So only gauge for the front and the rear air tanks. Okay. Um, the RPM gauge right here. Okay. One thing is if you drive in the coach without the seat belt engaged, it's not gonna give you reading on this on the speedometer. So the speedometer will not work at the We're not working with the seat belt. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to have to. Uh -huh. That's what they need to do to our cars. Uh, we're probably going to we're gonna drive the coach later. Don't see you My car is crazy. goes crazy. Yes, My but without the seat belt on, you're not going to see the yeah. mileage reading on the yeah. center. No. And you may say, hey, I don't have nothing on the dash. It's because you're no, driving on the seat belt. What is it? If, if, if they, we, we don't need to go over this. That's fine. But what is the Moss Ride fault that it keeps on saying? I'll do the check on that. Okay. Parking brake on, okay. This right here, it, it tells you the temperature of the transmission fluid. If you go on a downhill on an incline and you're using the engine retarder or or you coming down the hill with the low gear, it's gonna have a lot of friction in the transmission, so the temperature is gonna go up. If that happens, the first thing you're gonna lose is the is the jack um, is the engine retarder on the transmission side when the when the temperature engine reaches 270 degrees or something. Okay. Um, okay. The dashboard. This is all electronic now. You got two switches here. Two switches here, here right? So that's on the, the underside. Yes, right? underside okay. The one switch on top, once you hit the switch on the top on the left side, it's gonna give you the settings. You can go left and right with the top switch between settings and diagnostics, okay? So, and then off. We're gonna go settings. Then the second one is like an inner switch, like okay, but we're gonna click this one, and it's gonna give you three settings. Okay. Collision mitigation, which we don't have that one on this coach. Not yet. Yeah. Okay. And then the lighting system. You got two more right here, and you can scroll up and down. Up and down. Okay. We go to the lining, you choose the lining, Click the OK, and then you go up and down and yeah, say we got, you want to choose this color? There you go. Ah. Even on the handle, you will see the lights and everything change. Yes, and then you can go a different color right here. So that's yellow. Uh, yes. You go up and down, you okay, you go up and down, okay, and uh, on and off. And then you exit when you have the color you want. And then, yes, when you want the color, say you want the blue, you enter, we all okay with the blue color, okay. And then we go. Exit, 
in it. That's it. Now we're gonna we're gonna see more about what's going on with the bus. We go into the diagnostics with the upper switch. We enter diagnostics, and then we're gonna see instrument cluster. Click enter again here. And then we're gonna see which switch is on or off. Driver light switch on on off. So if it's green on white say, off. Yes. Yes. Green on, white is off. That's more like to diagnostic. You say, hey, my light's not working, the switch is not working. Like in this case, the driver's light is not working. It's not the switch because the switch, the system switch is, is reading the switch on and off. It's just the so bulb. Probably, the bulb. it's a lot when they did the, the lights. Okay. They disconnect. Okay. That's for you, that's for your switches, okay? Then uh, you exit the, you go to the engine, you go on down the road, check engine light comes on for any reason. I may ask you, hey, I need you to go into the engine settings, and once you get there, click OK, and there should be some numbers right here, and I'm going to ask you, give me those numbers, okay. so I can put those numbers on the computer and find out what's the meaning of the check engine light, and then we can work together through that, okay? So that's the engine, that's the electric fans, those fans right there, so System okay, motors okay, so you check that, that means. Oh, so if one no of those words. fans goes down, it'll actually, it'll actually it show should, you. It should give us right. a code right here. One thing I was going to say, guys, when he, said, give, uh, when he said, hey, give me the code that was displayed on the engine, they actually have an uh, on call technician 24 hours a day. Oh, so if you're, uh, if you're over the road and something happens, you can actually call their 800 number. It'll, uh, it's fully staffed at 8 p.m., and after 8 p.m., they go to an on call tech, and he, he can basically walk you through troubleshooting steps on like, this oh, is what you good. should do. So it's. 24-7. Yes. Okay. We're going to scroll down to transmission. Okay in the transmission. Same thing. If something wrong with the transmission, we're going to write down those numbers. Okay. Uh, ABS. Up and down, remember? Same, same thing. thing. Okay. Suspension. Basically the same thing. Everything goes by code, by numbers. Collision mitigation. Yes, we don't have that yet. Fusion camera. We don't have that yet. Air condition. Okay. We click OK, run AC. All right. That's where we can see the pressures and the temperatures. Okay. What's going on with the AC? Set point 66. It's 66 right now. It's going to 67. Yeah. It's really close. Passenger air temperature should be 66 inside. Okay. If it's a 66 for the passengers, that means the air that's coming out of the vents, it should be lower than that temperature. That right. probably 10 degrees lower, but 55 degrees is what the system is pushing out of the windows to keep the temperature to 66 inside the bus. And then uh, your engine coolant temperature is 187 degrees, uh, ambient temperature 66. That's the sensor that we don't want to cut. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the pressures. Right. The suction is at 40 psi, right. and the discharge is 180. Is there a temperature setting you should not go below? Because a lot of people have the habit it's 110 degrees. It's a lot they put to the coldest AC setting. And I, I mean, like in my house, like the AC can lock up sometimes. It's just the lines freeze. If it's if it's too cold outside, the AC is not going to work. But if for some reason it, it does, yes, it may freeze up the lines. So it's better to keep the temperature high. So even like if it's 110 degrees outside, because it gets that way. Um, you still would not put it on the lowest AC setting possible? Would you put it like at you can, 70 instead of 65? Okay. If, if it's 110 degrees outside, inside the bus is going to be like 120. It gets hotter inside, especially mm -hmm. yeah. with yeah. this. Yeah. Really hot. So, you can set the temperature 65 or the lowest it goes, 60 degrees, that's the lowest. Mm -hmm. And it's going to try and bring the temperature 120 all the way to 60 degrees. Okay. But what the system does is, Let's say you're 65, okay? The system is gonna work harder it can do to bring the temperature down. The AC is gonna work hard. Mm -hmm. But once it's getting close, close to that temperature, it's gonna start disengaging on loaders. Okay, I'm close there, I don't need to work that hard. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this off. Okay. I'm gonna slow the speed, I'm gonna do this. So I don't need to. And when it gets to that temperature, it's gonna be working like a 50% capacity. But if it's a different, like a four or five degrees, it's gonna work real hard to get the temperature, whatever you want. 
as I understand it, if we freeze up, it's signs of a different problem, like like a freon leak yeah. or uh, the filter hasn't been serviced. Clogged, exactly, the yeah. coil is is too dirty. The evaporator motor is not working, so that brings the the yeah. suction. If you suction, suction pressure 37 psi, that means it's working with just one unloader. It's working like a 50, 40 percent capacity. If this pressure drops down, that means the compressor is pumping harder. Okay. But that also means that there's no airflow for the evaporator. It has to work too hard. It's, if the pressure keeps going down, 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 it's going to get colder, 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 but there's no circulation, it's going to freeze the Yeah. Yeah. So, things that we need to look at. Okay. Tire pressure monitor system. Okay. Oh, we scroll okay. down. There you go. Now you see. Okay. Oh, wow. 120 psi for the front axle. 100 for the drive, 120 for the tanks. Okay. So it has a recommended listed for each tire. Yes, it's right here on the beam plane. Okay. All the pressures are okay. right here. Okay. Green, we good. Yellow, eh, something that we need to look at. Red, so definitely something's going on. So you can read, see the like. This is the the steel axle on the driver's side. Is with 140. 124 psi at a 61 degrees. I mean temperature. That means inside the that's the temperature inside, inside the tire. tire. Oh, wow. Okay. wow. And the system works both ways. If the pressure drops on the tire, the air pressure, 15 psi is gonna give you warning. Hey, I'm running low. If it's more than 40 percent, it's gonna give you hey, something's going on with the tire. We we flat. check it. Yeah, we gotta check. Okay. So you inflate the the steer tire to 120, the drive to 110, and the axle and the tag to 125. No, 125 on the steer okay. for the steer. 100 on the drives and 120 on the tag. Got it. But also, you reach the temperature. If for some reason one of the operators likes to step on the brakes a lot, you know, on and off the brakes, so the brakes are gonna get hot. So what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? The tire is gonna get hot as well. So the sensor inside the tire is gonna see that. Maybe nothing wrong with the air pressure, but it's gonna tell you, hey, something's getting hot back there. So you need to stop and see what's going on there. So that's the other way that that helps you. Okay. Or something with the brakes locked up or something, uh, and it's getting hot. It's gonna tell you, hey, you need to check this wheel. Check, I mean, check on those wheels. How, how often are the sensors faulty? The batteries should last for 40 years on this. This right here on the left side of the steering wheel is the switch uh, uh, control for the, the cruise control switches. You turn it on, and then the set button here, and the resume button, or you can turn it on. I mean, just like a car. Just same principle. Right here is your engine brake control, okay? This is your... Uh, Low level, medium level, or a system on the jake brake and the highest resistor. You're gonna sense that going down the hill and you can adjust depending the speed that you're going going down the hill. And as this button right here, it's like the 18, the 18 wheelers where they're passing you and they flash the lights to say, okay, thank you. Yeah. You can do the same thing here. Flicker on the lights. We are bus drivers yeah. can do the same. You push it and the lights would flicker on the back. Say, so, okay, thank you, okay, keep on going. So right there. Okay. Where's the horn? In the center? Okay. You got electric horn. I love the horn. The air horn. Electric horn and air horn right here. If, if you push the button. Whoa. Okay. Get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Okay. I used to the this, uh, yeah, me too. this switch right here uh, controls the air horn. The, the wipers. windshield wipers. The speed, the low speed, and the medium, fluid. and fast. Okay. And uh, yes, and the washer fluid, you push it's it down, middle, it's gonna, middle, yes. Yeah. Uh, there's your turn signal switch, down to the left, send it off, up to the right, like that. And this have the steering column, your steering, yeah, no. your steering wheel. Yep. Back to the turn signal switch, yes. er, earlier, weren't the cameras coming on when you did the turn signal? Yes, if you they come on on the side, yeah. Only with the need drive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yes out of uh, menu mode. Okay, um, the switches on the right hand side. 
see there is there's two things that I learned is why some switches on the right side why some switches on the there is a special purpose of that the switches on the left side is for the drivers to have a control that controls the vehicle and nobody as the passenger can reach through you yeah. but to get here that's why they move everything with to the coach here the the transmission display pad the headlight switch and the control for the suspension right here because you just got the lights and, and everything that's why we have two two sides of switch for safety mostly uh, baggage bay lights, this is what turn the lights in the baggage bay compartment. Oh, you can okay. leave them on and you can leave them off. It's up to you. This is how you lock the doors. Right inside, the lock. We even can hear them. Oh, the lock. that's left oh, and right? Yes. Left and right lock and unlock. Okay, okay. Yes. Okay. Um, step light switch. Step light switch, that's the light, yes, for the okay. step. But also, it got another purpose. That's the safety to start the bus. On MCI models, you gotta have the step light switch on prior to start the bus. If for some reason this switch is not on, won't start the bus yes. won't yeah, start. A lot of drivers don't know that. Yes. 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 Turn it on and start the coach. It's very important. Okay. Coach, you have the lights right here, four way flashers. Okay. This is the new system. Okay. This switch only is gonna load the front end of the coach, allow the people to get in and out of the bus. With the, you gotta hold it down, you gotta hold the switch down until the front drops all the way. It works with the pop, with the That's brake switch on. If, if the brake switch is, uh, is released, it's not gonna work. Okay, it's gonna release, it's gonna go back to normal level like that, or if for some reason you forget to press the button as soon as you release the parking brake, you should go up. The camera is on. Though. Yes, the cameras are on because the flashers okay. are on. If you turn the flashers on, the cameras will come on. Okay, and then uh, entrance door switch. You gotta hold it until it opens. Hold the switch until it closes. Okay. Um, okay, this your radio control right here. This side of the radio is, is for you as a drivers. This, see how you select the radio station, you can see here. And then this part here is for the passengers. You can go to a uh, radio. See? The passengers can listen to something while you can listen to some, something else. Okay. Okay. Um, if you want to play the DVD movie for the passengers, you got to switch to video mode. That's right. Okay. So this, if I understand, this also controls the auxiliary yes. control yes. unit. Okay. So there's an auxiliary control unit over there with USB, HDMI, and a three millimeter jack for yes. for audio. Yes. Okay. The video. I believe the DVD player is upstairs on top. You just yeah. you just pop a movie in there and everything should come up. Okay. If you want to try something else, like you said, you can switch auxiliary one, and then you can use the USB. Okay. Then you put it right here, and then for the passengers can see yes. whatever they have okay. here. Or if you want to go to uh, machine number two, HDMI, just like you were saying. Okay. What is the SRC button? This is so the one you switch for uh, uh, auxiliary one and two. Okay. Three point five millimeters. Okay. You can plug into that and do whatever you can. Okay. And then you go back to radio. So you just gotta take video to get to where you want. Yeah. 
And also this is your uh, AC controllers, okay? This is for your drivers. This is fully up automatic, okay? For the passenger? For, for the passengers. Okay. Uh, Departments, drivers, storage. Okay, um, any uh, any questions? Uh, <coughs> you wanna play with the steering wheel? See, you wanna sit down and move the switches? Yes, I mean, oh, uh, you wanna get oh, to the seat? Oh, we're talking about it. This is, right. turn that off. This, is, this is the PA. Oh. If you listen to the radio, you should automatically engage once you turn it on. Okay. okay. Then you turn it off, it goes back to the radio or whatever you do. <laughs> on the hand rest, is this sorry? Yes. This this gray knob here does that is that control anything? It's, yes, to adjust it. On any, this is on the bottom side of the hand. One, yes. Oh, so you want to adjust so the, level the height? The, yes, the okay. level C. You want to adjust at that at that okay. height, okay. and you want to go down. You just keep moving it. Okay. Whatever the height is. That's a nice adjustment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go on your seat belt. The seat belt is uh, built with the seat. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I see. Is that going down because you you st stood up, so the seat's yes, automatically dropping? Automatically dropping. Okay. Yes. Uh, I see. This says reserved for driver. Is that just storage for the driver, or is there yes, a, it actual compartments? Yes, for, for the drivers. What's what's in there? Is that just uh, uh, extra stuff? <coughs> this is your remote controls here, and your. Um, should be your cables for the for the video record system for the oh, 360 cameras. Okay. 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 This is. Uh, any questions for the dash? How do we record? What What are the most common questions that you actually do get from like the most common like, hey, how do I do this? Or is this an just The most of the common questions, the calls that we have for the drivers is, hey, if you got a failure, not a failure, but the tire pressure monitor system is gonna is gonna tell you what's going on with the tires, right? So uh, automatically it's gonna beep, it's gonna try to get your attention, hey, check me out. Yeah. So most of the driver says, hey, the system is not working. But it's not like it's not working. It's telling you that, hey, something is going on with yeah. the bus, please check. And most of the call is, okay, we got the lights beeping and stuff, is because the tire is low on air pressure. In, in your opinion, as a, as a coach driver yourself, um, what is the best way to handle the blowout on your steer tire? Going down the road or yeah, changing yeah, the yeah, tire? No, you're on the highway and, and, you, and you have a blowout. You got a blowout. What is the you, best way to maintain control of your coach and to safely bring it to a stop? Okay. To safety is hang on to steering wheel, keep it on a straight position. Okay. And also, you have the um, ESC system, which is electrical stability control that is gonna help you to keep the bus on a straight position. In case you're swinging down the road, the system is gonna engage the brake transmission to keep it on a straight position. But also, as a driver, I will hold the steering wheel in a straight position and slowly bring in the coach to us. So don't, 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 don't push on the brake hard. You're not supposed, do do right. supposed to do that. You're not supposed to do that. You gotta keep control of the steering wheel at all the times. At all the time. Let go of the gas. Yes. Oh, yeah. So okay, so I heard. So he said, like, the I heard in, the, in like, let's say this 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 front pass this passenger tire blows the front. Okay. I actually heard you do not to maintain control. You actually do not take your foot off the gas. You actually put your give it more gas. So you maintain a straight line because the G force is pulling the bus to the to the left now. So what happened is, if you have a blowout on the steering wheel on the right hand side, just like you said, the weight of the coach is going to lean to that side. So it's not actually this pulling to that in, it's because the weight of the bus is actually making you go that in. That's why you don't go against that, because if you go completely against that, yeah. the end of the coach is gonna swing, and then we got that. So what you're trying to do is, you know, uh, keep it on a straight line. Don't don't fight with it, just just keep it straight. That's my recommendation. Okay. That's my recommendation. All right. Is there anything that we need to review from the inside for the... Yes, we're going to move to the... Oh, sorry, uh, excuse window. me. Okay. Go ahead. If we have a blowout on the tag axle, it's hard to notice that because right. we're driving forward 
So we drag in the end of the coach forward. It's not like having a blowout on the front. You barely can feel the blowout of the tank. So right. that's why this is very important. When I tell you we got a blowout on the back, you're not going to run the coach until the tire blow out of pieces and causes more damage to the unit. Because right. right. if you're driving the coach with a blowout on the back, you're not going to sense any of this. But you're going to see a lot of damage. But also right. it could cause fire, right? The friction. Yeah. Yeah. On the drive axle, it probably will do it. It will do it. Right. If you have a blowout on the drive axle, especially with the inner tire, yeah. it's going to make friction with the other tire. And probably will cause some, some damage. Yeah. Uh, on the inside of the coach, we have two emergency exit windows on the roof, one from the front, one from the back. <coughs> so what you do in case of an emergency, push it up, then turn this knob to exit and push it, and the door will open up completely. Then you put it in the lock position again and push it back. That's how you do. Uh, we have a first aid kit right here. It's gotta be on the bus at all the times. It's a DOT requirement. Well, that's what kit? that's first, 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 aid. first aid kit. Okay. First aid kit, and underneath the second row, passenger side seats, there's the fire extinguisher. It's gotta be dated also. One year, that's it. Um, overhead compartment doors, okay. Uh, we have seven windows on each side of the coach. The two front, they're stationary window. They don't open. The third, the fourth, and the fifth, they do open. They're emergency window. You flip the handle and open the window on both sides. Lift the handle up, push the window. Okay. That also is a DOT requirement that you have to inspect every 90 days. 90 days. 90 days. Let me ask you, um, is, I can see kids, you know, you're doing it, kids, you have a bunch of 10 year old, 12 year olds, they start fiddling, they get bored, they start fiddling with the knob. Is there a sensor for the driver while you're driving that bat that they just left no, in the handle? Unfortunately, no, there's no sensor for that. Okay, when you feel that hit, Alright, and um, so, and with yours, so you, you unlatch and you push out and then just use your, just, just a little bit of yeah. force to, to pull it back in and latch. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. it's the handle, you put the handle up, push the window up. Same thing, you close, close the window, push the handle down and lock the window in place. I have a question. Yes. So, I noticed that all the seat belts are on, like someone sitting in them? Yes. If someone is sitting in a seat as a passenger, do they have to have on the seat belt? Okay. They, it's up to them. That's why on the on the DVD, on the program that you're supposed to play at the very beginning on your trip, it tells the passengers about the safety of putting the seatbelt on. Is it a law? Is it a law? And that also, there's a light up here okay. that tells the passenger to. But it adjust. will not make a bite. No, okay. it won't be. Because right. imagine, it's up to them. Sixty so person here, everybody with the seat on light. They wouldn't tell you, hey, why well, we need to focus driving. The Right. Okay. What is the law required? Is that like, is that required? It's, it's up to the Not individual. Yet. Yes, about okay. the individual. Yes. Um, going towards the back. Um, that's the second exit right here. Same, same like the front, okay? Uh, restroom. Okay. Oh, it's this, left. Is, this is very important right here. Okay, this is your toilet right here. It's got a lock. When the people get inside the toilet, you look close to the door. The green line means it's unoccupied. Anybody can use it. Once they engage the lock, break the light on oh, okay. red. That means somebody's inside the restroom. Okay? There have been some cases that some people are inside the toilet and they cannot come out. So what do they do? They get them out of the window or somewhere else. Well, if you remove this bracket right here, okay? There should be a lever. 
with a yellow hand. In a case of emergency, remove this, put the knob down, and you should be able to take the whole door out. Oh, wow. And get the person in quick. <coughs> okay. There, there is a, a, a call for help, right, in the, in the restroom, like to get the, the driver's attention. Chauffeur, yes, it's right here. Yeah, and I, I, I can hear the bus right there. Okay. That's the red button right here. Thank you. Okay. The signal the driver. That they're locked in. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, um, what else we have? Oh, this, these are the vents for the auxiliary air unit. Okay. It's better to keep them open so that all the air is going to sit on there quickly. Um, your window shades. Pull it down and they're locked. You want to release them down and they go up. There's one window shade on each place, on each window. Like that. Locks in place. Now, this is another emergency window. No. no. That's a label that it says that it's not an emergency window. It points to the front of the coach to that window. completely open, wide open, operator should be able to see it. Right? Yeah. Oh, but if it's not fully closed, then... Uh, what about the what about the rear access is open for the engine? Is that they can't see? That's no indication, okay. indicator left for the driver. Okay. But there's also the backup camera. If you flip it, it will tell you right away that it's yeah. something. Sense. It will help yeah. you that. Okay. Another way. Yeah, no, it's cool. it's like that. Anything else? Good. Any, 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 no, any other questions? Anything else we should know? Uh, <laughs> well, just do your inspections on the bus. This bus is it's a very expensive bus. It's built for, for passengers, for you. Uh, check the bus before your trip and after your trip. Make sure and it's clean. Make sure you get a ticket. I mean, keep it clean. A clean bus tastes a lot who's the driver. That's the and, uh, and we're here for you but to help you. Anything we can. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Great, great, great.